Our next inductee is Lucille Packard Children's Hospital. Lucille Packard Children's Hospital has a long history of providing extraordinary care and innovation for babies, children, and expectant mothers from the community and beyond. The hospital began with the vision of one mom, Lucille Salter Packard, the generous founder and visionary for children's health. They now have a Stanford doctor in more than 60 locations throughout the Bay Area and 100 locations in the Western United States. They saw more than 475,000 patients in only the last year. Accepting the award is a man, Mr. Robert Poole, who has been with Lucille Packard Children's Hospital for over 36 years. He's one of the original employees and he actually knew Lucille. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Robert Poole. Well, it's great to be here tonight. Uh, I've really enjoyed all of the speakers thus far, and it is an honor to uh, receive this award for happiness on behalf of the Children's Hospital. Um, I feel quite fortunate to uh, be here and receive the award on behalf of the hospital. Um, I learned last week that I was going to be the person to come and give uh, this brief presentation, and. Uh, I called my wife, she was quite excited that uh, the Giants were being inducted along with the, <laughs> with the Children's Hospital. And uh, you know, I was excited because I had worked with uh, Bubba's mother at Stanford in the early years when she was working at the hospital as well. And uh, my wife said, I can't wait to meet Matt Duffy. And when I got home, and I, and I said, uh, did I say Matt Duffy? <laughs> she says, yeah, I, I know you love Matt Duffy. She says it every time he comes up to bat. I love Matt Duffy, and you know, he would always come through with a hit. And, uh, and I think, Mike, you've really come up with a hit, having this to uh, acknowledge. Um, the happiness that is needed in the world and the happiness that uh, comes from a children's hospital because they truly are special places. Um, I'm going to give a brief history of uh, Lucille Packard Children's Hospital because it does go much farther back than uh, 1991 when we opened. Um, early on here at Stanford in 1917, they had uh, what was called the Stanford Convalescent Hospital for Children, the Con Home, it used to, to be known as, and they would bring children from San Francisco out of the cold and fog during the summer for sunshine therapy down here. And the sunshine therapy was to treat things like polio, asthma, um, other uh, diseases that it didn't do one thing for, but they did get some nice warm weather, some sunshine, and a nice tan. Um, but uh, then in 69, the Children's Hospital at Stanford uh, opened. Uh, it was a 60-bed facility, and at the same time, uh, at the University Hospital, there was a small pediatric section, which was about 100 beds that had the critical care patients and the uh, neonatal unit, which was just beginning the whole study of neonatology and uh, the treatment of uh, premature infants. In uh, 1986, David and Lucille Packard donated $40 million to build the Children's Hospital as it stands today, um, and it had the name New Children's Hospital, which I thought was kind of funny because how long is a new Children's Hospital new? Um, and uh, that was 1986. The very next year, uh, Mrs. Packard passed away, and uh, in her memory, 
uh, the hospital became known as Lucille Salter Packard Children's Hospital at Stanford. We opened in 1991 and combined Children's Hospital at Stanford with the inpatient critical care units that were already at the University Hospital. Um, our mission of the hospital is to help children live healthier and happier lives. Um, and we do that through the discovery of new therapies, research, and uh, also education, training future uh, physicians, nurses, pharmacists, and other healthcare professionals. Um, but the things that are special about Children's Hospital is at Packard, we want kids to be kids even while they're in the hospital. Um, adults, when they go to the hospital, they can adapt to their environment, but a children's world really is centered around things at home, things that are familiar, their family, their siblings, and um, their toys, of course. Um, and we try to recreate that as much as we can for the children when they're in the hospital. We have um, a bed for the parents to stay overnight with the child, so they're never left alone without a family member. Um, we have a school for those patients that are able to go to school and continue their school work. Uh, play therapists, pet therapy. We have people bring in their pets uh, uh, to visit the children. Um, we even have an annual trick-or-treat trail that was quite a success again this year uh, for Halloween. And then uh, in the spring, we actually have a prom for the teen patients that have to be in the hospital so that they don't miss their high school proms. Um, Children's Hospital, as I said, are special places. Lucille Packard Children's Hospital, our hospital, my hospital, we take care of the sickest children in the nation, if not the world. Um, and that's based on measures of illness, acuity, uh, when we're compared to other children's hospitals. So uh, the way I always say it, say it, we, if we can't fix it, nobody can fix it. Um, and we don't transfer patients, patients get transferred to us. Um, Mrs. Packard's dream was that the Children's Hospital would be the hub of children's health in the future, um, and that it would be a global effort. And at this point in time, more than 60% of our patients come from beyond the Bay Area. Um, we have lots that are international patients that come for surgeries um, and treatments that are only available at our hospital. Um, many times over the last few years, I've been asked why I work at a children's hospital and why I'm still there 35 years later. And, um, I think it's similar to um, what Mike Duffy has determined. He had a, a nice equation uh, that purpose, if you have purpose and you make progress and you have God in your life, whatever God that may be, you add those three things together and you have happiness. And um, for me, purpose is about helping others. And Stanford is a place where discoveries are made and we've made lots of progress over the years. Um, the childhood leukemias, when, when I first started in pediatrics, 95% of the uh, acute leukemics died. And with combination chemotherapy and multi-center trials over the years, um, we're now curing 80 to 85 percent of the patients that get leukemia. Um, it's it's kind, of, kind of an interesting touch, but you know, those investigational drugs that I helped to prepare and we administer to children in the early years uh, are now commercially available, but one of them uh, in the very earliest of years was arsenic and we gave arsenic intravenously 
which is, we all know as a poison, in a dose that probably wasn't the best dose. But we now have protocols again, 38 years later, that have arsenic in them, if you can believe that. So uh, the, the discoveries are uh, pretty incredible. We've seen uh, infant mortality. Uh, when I first started in pediatrics, there were babies, uh, uh, no babies less than 1.5 kilos survived. And uh, at Stanford, our smallest patient has been 320 grams. And, and uh, I saw that little boy when he was three years old, because we have preemie reunions every year at the hospital, normal in every way, running around like all the other three-year-olds. It was just amazing. Um, the the uh, ability to be in clinical drug trials and actually administer the drugs to uh, patients is something that pharmacists didn't do uh, before I got here. Um, and a lot of pharmacists did not want to do that, to take a baby, a premature infant, off of the ventilator, instill a drug into their lungs, uh, and put them back on the ventilator. Um, and, it, and they would, right before your eyes, instead of seeing this little gray baby struggling and gasping for air, would turn pink right before your eyes with the lung surfactant. So I see I just hit zero, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take just a couple more minutes. I know uh, um, I got cheated uh, at the Employee Awards last week. Um, <laughs> when, when, when I was to give awards out, uh, we were 35 minutes behind, and so I, I had my speech, I had to give in negative 35 minutes, which was very difficult. But uh, I think this, the secrets for me to, to happiness uh, really are around helping others. I think that's the number one reason that we're put on this earth, is to help each other, because life at times is not very easy. Uh, and if we can help in any little way, um, it makes a big difference. Um, I've been, been blessed, and I, the, the one thing I would add to Mike's uh, purpose, uh, progress, and God is love. And uh, the, the love of my life is here tonight for 40 years. We had four sons. Um, and I, I just have a quick question for the audience. Well, with four sons came four daughters-in-law, but does anyone out there have more than 11 grandchildren? That's what I thought. We've had, we have 11 grandchildren in the last 12 years, and they really make me happy. So thank you.